This is the gear cutter arbor I made recently. You can watch the full build video by clicking on the link at the top right now. In this video I'm going to go into some of the detail of cutting the thread for this part on the Proxon lathe. To ensure the thread has a clean start and finish it's a good idea to cut a groove at the end of the thread. This ensures the cutting tool is clear at the end of the cut and isn't left embedded in the material at the end of each pass. It's also useful to use a chamfer tool at both ends of the surface to be threaded. This makes the start and end of the passes a little more gentle and ensures the thread start is cleaner. I use this CCMT insert tool to cut the leading edge chamfer at an angle of 40 degrees. I cut the end groove with a 2mm parting tool. and then chamfer the trailing edge with the same CCMT tool. Before setting up the lathe to cut a thread it's important that the compound and tool post are clean and stable. I start out by stripping the carriage down and making sure each part of the assembly is in good shape. I use kerosene in this old rag which seems to dissolve the grime just fine. The compound is only bolted down at a single point, so in order for it to be secure there needs to be a good metal to metal contact between the compound and the carriage. This surface gets built up with cutting oil residue and chips on my lathe, which needs to be removed. The underside of the compound needs to be cleaned similarly. Chips or parts hitting the carriage can raise small burrs which interfere with the contact surface. I use a gentle abrasive stone to make sure these burrs are removed and the surface is flat. The underside of the compound is a softer alloy, so it should be stoned very lightly. The compound angle should be set slightly less than 30 degrees for metric threads. This tool is probably more accurate than necessary, a set square or combination square would do just fine. Be careful while tightening the screw as the single screw design makes it extremely easy to accidentally skew the angle while tightening. The compound should be set with a couple of millimetres of travel available to advance the tool. The contact surfaces on top of the compound and the base of the tool post should be cleaned and stoned the same way as the carriage. The tool post needs to be set at exactly 90 degrees to the axis of the lathe to ensure the threading tool is aligned correctly. To get this really accurate requires an indicator, which takes a while, so for this thread I used a square to get it close enough. When tightening the tool post it's really easy to knock the tool post itself out of alignment or the compound angle, so check both angles once everything is assembled. The lathe tool I used is a standard external threading carbide tool with an 11mm general purpose 60 degree insert. The next step is to fit the lead screw and the change gears to the feed screw. To select the correct gears look them up on this table in the manual. For a 1mm thread pitch I need a 20 tooth change gear and a 20 tooth lead screw gear. The lead screw gear fits onto the end of the lead screw with the retaining screw tightened against the flat. The change gear is more fiddly to fit as the bolt needs to screw into a nut held on the back of the gear arm. The gear assembly consists of a bushing that the gear runs on, the gear itself, a washer and a bolt through the middle. It's easy to assemble these before attempting to fit them to the rail. The gear spacing is also fiddly. 
The gears need to be close enough to engage well, but not so close that there's resistance. Trial and error is required as it's difficult to tell whether the spacing is right without fully tightening the bolt. The belt connects the change gear to the tooth pulley on the back of the main spindle and the arm can be adjusted to set the correct belt tension. The lathe is now fully set up to cut the thread. Very lightly touch the threading tool to the diameter of the part to be threaded. This is the starting depth. Zero the scale on the cross slide. All the passes will be done with the cross slide in this position, so make sure it's exactly where it was when the tool touched the outer diameter of the part. Take up any backlash in the compound and zero the scale. And flip the control to engage the lead screw. Set the lathe to a slow speed and cut a scratch pass. The lathe needs to be stopped while the tool is in the groove at the end of the cut to avoid damaging the rest of the part. This is much easier when the lathe is running slowly, but with practice I find I can do it reliably at higher speeds. After the scratch pass, I always double check the pitch with a thread gauge. To prepare for the next pass, back the carriage away to clear the tool and run the lathe in reverse to track the tool back to the start. Return the carriage to the zero position that was set earlier. Advance the compound to set the depth of the next cut. At this stage only the point of the tool is engaged in the material, so the depth can be relatively large. The sequence for the next pass is the same. Back away the carriage, run the lathe back, bring the carriage forward to zero, and advance the compound. With enough practice this sequence becomes second nature. The tool engagement gets larger with later passes and it becomes important to use cutting oil to get clean cuts. As the tool engagement gets larger, the depth of cut needs to be decreased to make sure the cutting forces don't get too high for the lathe. The depth of cut is now down to 0.05mm from the starting depth of 0.15mm, so progress is slow. It's important to stop cutting the thread at the correct depth, but determining exactly where that is isn't obvious. One way to measure precisely is using thread wires, which I'll describe in a future video. 
In this video I cut the thread slightly too deep, but fortunately I was able to compensate for it when I made the nut. It's better practice to cut threads to a correct, standard dimension rather than just cutting them to fit the matching part. One clear sign that the thread is nearing completion is when there's no longer any of the original outer diameter surface left. It took a lot of passes to complete this thread, which are very similar. I'm including them here for completeness, but if you prefer to skip the repetitive bit, jump ahead to 13 minutes to find out how the thread is finished. Whoops, I overshot and scratched the edge of the register. The thread is now nearly complete, so this part is cutting at the same tool position as the previous pass. This is called a spring pass and it ensures that the thread is consistent and clean along the entire length. It compensates for any flexing in the tool post due to the cutting forces. The tool is now at its final depth, and just to make sure the thread was cut cleanly I did three spring passes at this depth.
That was the final pass, so I back the comband out to the starting position and take up the backlash. Disengage the lead screw and run the tool along the thread with the lathe at regular turning speed. The tool is at the original outer diameter of the material, so this pass removes any burr that has been raised. Running a triangular needle file along the thread removes any burr left inside the groove. I hope you found this guide useful. If you haven't watched it already, check out the full project video for this gear cutter arbor at the link on the top right now. Let me know if you're interested in a similar video about cutting the matching inside thread for the nut.